I don't know if you've seen one of these before, but it's a rather unusual vegetable. It's a Japanese radish or a muli. So you make sushi out of it. You must make a, a lot of sushi when you make it. But I, I'm going to make this into a sort of clownet, a reeded instrument. Okay. You could do it with carrots as well, but you don't get them as big, so not as good. So you need a very big drill, if you've got a very big radish. Uh, a really good sharp kitchen knife and a big one works well here. Um, that's to make the holes, the tone holes. Uh, you could use a cork bore, of course. And you need something for a reed. And uh, for this, I've just got bits of plastic. I'm not sure which is going to work. I'm going to play around. This is a bit of milk bottle. This is a bit of washing up liquid bottle. OK, it, it, it needs to be something stiff, does it? It needs to be. A, what a reed does is you have a hole and this vibrates and opens and closes against the hole. So it needs to bounce back a bit. So I'm a bit worried that this is a bit, all a bit floppy. So, as with all these vegetables, you're better off sewing with a smooth end at the end if you want to try and cut it. And then, slowly as you go. So why do you think you need to use such a big vegetable as the, uh, the white radish? Well, you can get a much larger range of notes. I mean, when I make this properly, I don't know if it's going to work today, I can get an octave out, so I can actually play things like whole Christmas carols and stuff like that. Whereas if you've got a sh short carrot, you can't change the length very much, and you, so you don't get a big note. You can join bits together. So if you get a, a carrot, you can join them up and stack them up to make something longer, but you've got to join them somehow. And I've done that with a bit of um, copper piping before. But it's not as good as working with one whole vegetable. Much easier. Of course, we have to be very careful, I suppose, with the making sure that the drill doesn't come out the side. Yeah, because it will actually split. I can actually, you can actually, if you hold on to it, you can actually feel it through the sides, and actually, I can see you can actually see it goes a bit translucent. So I know that actually the hole's just about there. So if I just do a very rough cut. And there's the actual, there's the actual hole of it coming out. Um, so you've got the hole. Now, so if you look at a clarinet mouthpiece, you know, look at a picture up on the internet, you can see what you're trying to make. What you're trying to do is you've got a reed which is open and closing against this hole, but you can't open and close against a hole which is flat that way. You need to have it on a diagonal. So you make the lay, as it's called. And uh, I'll just cut it to start with. What's it called again, Trevor? The lay. The lay, OK. I'm really thinking about which way I'm doing this. Let's do a rough cut. If I do this the right way, then that's the wrong way. It's come out rather one side. One side. That's it. OK, now we're talking. So what, this is the reason you need a nice, big, sharp knife. Because what you're trying to do is this flat surface must be really, really flat. So if you use a small knife and you make a little curvy cut, the reed will never close it completely shut. So this surface must be as flat as you can. So a really sharp, big knife. Cut all the way up, so there's a flat surface all the way around, and the angle's really important. So I guess that's about 30 degrees or something, so that's kind of important as well. And then what you're going to have is you're going to have a bit of plastic, and you can use washing up liquid bottle, all sorts of plastic. And the idea is when you blow, it's going to flap open and close, and that's going to give you the sound that you want. Now, that's with all these things, whether it works first time is a bit of a miracle. It's actually so big I can't get it in my mouth. Let me just cut the back of this a bit. <laughs> so you can see the sort of sound you start to get out of it. So it's a delicate balance. If, if when you blow it, it goes oomph and stops, it means the thing's slamming shut and it's not springing back enough. So you make the thing a bit more springy by um, flexing the plastic, bending it a bit. If you find it sort of the air just goes shh through it and you don't get any note, it means the plastic isn't slamming shut. So you have a look at the surface, check it's flat, and maybe bend it back the other way. So you have to play with a bit of the reed to get it kind of so it opens and closes. The other thing, if you are a normal single reed player, um, you put it in a long way in your mouth you, because on this you want to get your mouth all the way up here. So you, it's not like a clarinet where you're resting your lips halfway down the reed. It's, you're putting it all in your mouth a long way. And then you get the notes. So you need to put the bottom of your lip around the bottom. <laughs> Beyond where it's really vibrating. So that's not playing completely happily, so I'm going to bend it back. 
Yeah, you get the vital notes. So you play around with where your lips are, how you bend the plastic, and then finally, once you've got it right, you can secure it with an elastic band. Is probably easiest, but you can use tape. Depends if your co-workers allow you to use elastic. So you've cut a groove in there. Yeah, because otherwise it slips up. It's a wet instrument and it doesn't want to hold in place. So you just cut a groove to stop the elastic band disappearing. Now this reed is really too short, so the elastic band might get in the way. Now what you find is though you've made it and it was working nicely, now you've got elastic banded, the whole dynamics have changed. It's also got carrot all over it from the table. So you might need to again bend it a bit and play around with it a bit. So it's a, it takes a bit of going, but once you get this working, it's probably one of the wind instruments, it's probably one of the most reliable. <laughs> So you can get quite a reasonable tune. Now, we can only get one note out of it. How do you get more notes? Is we put tone holes. So like you've got your clarinet or your recorder, we have a set of holes. Now you can do all that with drill, but actually it's probably easy, a bit easier with a cork bore. And so where to put the holes is a bit of, um, you can look it up. There are, you know, tunings. You can work, work out where to do it. But broadly speaking, think of like a recorder, kind of that sort of spacing is going to work with your fingers. And that's what I intend to go for. Um, so if we start off with maybe a hole there, and when you make the hole, you look down the end and line everything up so it goes into the middle of the, the bore. You don't want to miss the bore. Push it through, and then you've got a hole. The nice thing about using these is you get a cleaner hole, don't you? Makes it a lot easier to use. So you just make the other holes. happy at the top. What should we play? <laughs>